Hi folks, welcome back. This uh, set of lectures is going to be on biological explanations of gender. We'll find all sorts of biological explanations of gender that have existed throughout time and with this chapter we're going to kind of break that apart and try and understand where those biological explanations and understandings in our society have come from. When we're talking about biological explanations of gender, we're, we're kind of looking at this concept of anatomy as destiny. These biological explanations are popular in society for many reasons. Um, one, it has this ring of true science, something that we'll find in uh, Darwin's explanations and then social Darwinism to follow that. Uh, it seems to support common sense thinking. Now, that may be the case at this particular time, but that could be simply because of a social construction of gender, um, especially in reference to male and female roles over time. Um, uh, that can be affected by policy, politics, power, um, and what seems to be common sense today might not always be common sense. This idea of anatomy as destiny also tells us that we just simply can't help it. And if we can't help it, then there's no sense of um, trying to change society. It's just the way it is. Uh, biological uh, determinism reassures us that it's natural this construction of gender roles in our society is somehow natural and supported. And then it also tells us not only is it natural, not only is it supported, but it's essentially the way it should be. As we will find in many sociology courses, gender in particular, uh, history is important. Prior to the 19th century, theology was how we constructed gender. God created man and woman for different purposes. And the differences, the main important differences, was reproduction, was the key distinction. Um, much of what we know in society, especially prior to the 19th century, is seen in reference to the role of religion. Uh, Catholicism, Judaism, Hinduism, Taoism, Christianity, and I mean Christianity in the, um, uh, the aspects of uh, Christian theology that were uh, bifurcations of Catholicism. These were extremely important in how people saw themselves in, in, in relationship to their society. And, and what they believed and what they were uh, willing to do to protect those beliefs. So do not downplay the importance of religion in the social construction of our reality. As, as religion becomes less important and science takes on a new role, we'll see um, society begin to question religion, but many of those same ideals, many of those same uh, morals and values uh, find their way into science itself. And science ends up supporting, in many respects, uh, traditional gender roles in our society. Of course, the late 20th century saw Darwin and the rise of Darwinism, uh, biological explanations of difference between men and women, especially Darwin's law, our natural law, or natural selection, um, are given greater preference in how we socially construct our realities in the 20th century and the 21st century. These works legitimate social structural segregation of men and women and they do so by constructing it as science. 
So as we move away from the religious constructions of reality and we move into the scientific constructions of reality, we see these traditional gender roles uh, perpetuated. Women must be according to social Darwin. And, and so, so it's important to, distinct, or to distinguish between Darwinism, which was an explanation of natural selection in uh, species found on the planet, and social Darwinism. Darwinism is talking about changes that happen over uh, long periods of time. Social Darwinism, on the other hand, uh, is talking about changes in society that take place over maybe two, three hundred, four hundred years. Um, now, I'm not sure that it's appropriate to take Darwinism and bring it to the social milieu um, for many reasons, and if, if none other than the short time frames. But within social Darwinism, women must be protected from what men must endure. Uh, in, in other words, women are too feeble to participate in politics. Voting would put a strain upon their, their already small, weak bodies and brains. Um, education would be a problem as well. Um, you just can't handle it, ladies. And men are just trying to help you out. Men are just trying to um, relieve you from the stresses of society. And if we attempt to remedy inequality between the sexes, we essentially are going to go against natural laws. Uh, these natural laws were once theological laws, um, and now they're being argued in science. Uh, political leaders or political leaders have used this biological pseudoscience for centuries to propagate sexual discrimination. This is something that we're coming to concept or coming to um, uh, understand as we move into the 21st century, how science has been used um, uh, to perpetuate male dominant roles, um, uh, the, the rise of feminism, uh, essentially accuses science of uh, th this traditional science of uh, being male dominated, especially white male wealth dominated. And um, uh, as we uh, allow more voices into the practice of science, these ideas will change. Um, this Today's arguments uh, for biological uh, determinism center on three areas of research. Of course, evolutionary theories from sociobiology to evolutionary psychology, brain research, and endocrinology research, or how estrogen and testosterone differentially impact men and women. The first that we're going to deal with is going to be the evolutionary theories. And in the evolutionary theories, all creatures obey the biological principle. According to evolutionary biologists, males and females differ, uh, develop different strategies to ensure reproductive su uh, success. And then, of course, you've got these sexual psychologies where males produce ma many sperm, need to fertilize a great number of eggs, and men are naturally promiscuous because of this. Females, on the other hand, produce one egg, more choosy about their mating, and women are naturally monogamous. Um, this very well can be the result of a social construction of reality. Um, if we, uh, and not only that, but self-selection within nature itself. We can find these traits within males and females within society or within uh, species, but we can also find uh, situations where females are more promiscuous and males are less promiscuous. Uh, we find this in many primate species, uh, chimpanzees, uh, certain chimpanzees, uh, 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 in certain chimpanzees we find that females are way more promiscuous and they engage in sexual intercourse with multiple partners multiple times uh, while they're um, uh, ovulating or in heat. So um, it just depends on what we're looking at in the natural world uh, in, in reference to uh, the conclusions that we'll come up with that support or negate 
the uh, biologically determined characteristics of gender where males are uh, more dominant, males are more promiscuous, and females are less dominant and um, less promiscuous. Uh, from these distinct evolutionary imperatives, of course, we argue that sexual psychologies come uh, from different temperaments and personalities. This leads us into what's, co what's considered evolutionary psychology, where it's argued that males are more aggressive, controlling, and dominant. Females are programmed to be passive, reactive, and emotional. And uh, ultimately, this leads us to the idea that males who rape are fulfilling their genetic drive to reproduce as females evolve to deny males the opportunity to copulate. Um, uh, how evolutionary biology uh, comes to the conclusion that rape is okay uh, is, is quite astonishing to me, um, but uh, nevertheless, we, we see arguments for this within our society. One of the books that you will read in this class um, is called Half the Sky, and it will deal with rape in the developing world, and you can come to your own conclusions. Um, you're going to find many arguments within this textbook that are going to confound you as you read the um, uh, Half the Sky. And uh, rape is, is a conundrum for us, and it's something that we need to understand as we move forward as a society. Now, as you can imagine, there are problems with these evolutionary theories. Um, one being sociobiologists observe the normative and then read it into our genetic coding. Um, uh, but we have to ask ourselves, can this be empirically tested? These are often based on preconceived ideas, uh, selective use of data, and the fact that data comes from animals and not humans. Uh, there's, there's a um, question of whether we can anthropomorphize uh, animal behavior with human behavior um, and, and whether that really gets at what's going on in our social societies uh, versus what's going on in other species, uh, socially constructed societies. Uh, there are also the, uh, the discounts that rape is about power. Um, this is something that we really need to think about. And it's something that surprised me as I was working through the material in this class, and that is that there are more men raped in American society than there are women. Um, now, of course, this happens in a prison setting, but in excess of 200,000 men are raped per year in our prison systems. And this is not about uh, reproduction. This is about power. And uh, even the rapes that we see in our, in our own society, outside of the prison systems, rapes being uh, conducted by males on females uh, are usually not about sexual reproduction. They are about power and control. Um, these arguments do not take into uh, account uh, sex for pleasure or non-reproductive sex, something that we have found uh, growing in occurrence in our own societies as we move from the uh, less promiscuous 1930s, 40s, 50s, and 60s into the more promiscuous 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and even into the new millennia. Um, and uh, this also does not take into consideration female orgasms, right? Female orgasms are uh, something that are not required for sexual reproduction, yet uh, males in our society continue to strive, hopefully continues to strive to, um, males and females, should I say, um, continue to uh, strive to bring females to climax. Um, now, males' climax is something that is necessary for reproduction, but females are not. Um, so we can, we can logically argue that these reproductive strategies um, uh, are not always 
what's driving 